Apparently, the gays all love having sex with each other. We just don't like each other. Welcome to No Two Gays About It. I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And together we are bringing the over 50 gay voice back to the conversation. This season, Michael and I have been talking about all the different relationships that gay men our age experience. And today, we're going to be discussing the relationships within the gay community with each other. And no one is more qualified to talk about various gay relationships than my co-host, the ho himself, Mr. Michael Foley. Well, okay then. (laughs) I'm not sure qualified is the right word, but I definitely have experience in the realm. I just wanted to call you a ho. I know, I know. Um, Anyway, so this conversation was started by one of our listeners who wrote in and said, you know, we really do need to discuss what's happening out there within the gay community. And then Michael showed me one of his apps, which I am so clueless on, and I was shocked. He was reading about how discriminatory people are on these apps. And then I started doing some research and was like, what the heck? I prejudice and discrimination and bigotry and ageism and racism it's crazy what's happening out there yeah, within there's there's definitely a lot and the apps i think have definitely magnified it because this has existed since i came out in the 80s and i'm sure it's been around since our community has existed which is you know the beginning of time that there are different sure pods and um prejudices um, within our community itself, but um, it seems to have gotten out of hand with the the, the onset of the apps. I, I maybe I I don't know. I mean, as we're discovering in life, all of this nasty stuff is just coming to the surface. But I was just again, I was a little shocked when I was reading all, especially about this racism within the gay community. Yeah, I'll sh- let's share with them what I showed you. It just okay. it, 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 somebody had sent me a wolf on scruff, and um, I read a profile before <laughs> I. T- I'm sorry, <laughs> a wolf on scruff. A wolf <laughs> on scruff. Yes, I'm so um, out of everything. It's when somebody lets you know. <laughs> Which kind of annoys me. They let you know that they're interested without actually sending you a hello or how you doing. It's just something called a woof. And That's it's this so little great. it's this little paw on the screen that you oh, hit. It gets any better. That's awesome. And then the person gets a notification that you know someone is interested. So I tend to look at a profile before I um will go any further. And this particular profile that I showed Tom had in it. No fats, no femmes, no Asians. And it, it, it's appalling. I mean, you know, you could have what it is that you, is your preference, but to put something in writing like that, to me, seems hyper-aggressive and offensive in a way that it doesn't need to be. That doesn't need yeah. to be in your profile. If someone hits you up and you're not interested, you know, what I do is just say, you know, thank you. Um, we're definitely not a match, but I appreciate the interest. And there's a way to be polite without being a fucking douche nozzle or what would appear to be an actual racist. Yeah, well, it's that racism that I I kept reading about, you know, against blacks and Hispanics and Asians and Middle Easterners. And like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, first of all, I thought we were all in our little community, supporting one another. Obviously not. No. But this, like, blatant racism, as you said, like, okay, so if you're not into Hispanic guys, okay, fine. But do you have to, like, wear it proudly on a T-shirt? Or put it, it. put it in writing on a profile. Don't put it in your profile. And then if someone who happens to be, you know, even a, a physical type that you're not into... Um, There's a way of actually just being nice without being an asshole. And to me, putting something like that in a profile is, it's not even passive aggressive. It's aggressive aggressive Yeah. to me. Um, And I I don't see the need for it. Well, apparently people don't care. They're just voicing their opinions. But 
that there is also, as I was reading, um, violence within, I mean, I, this is something I don't see. I, as I've gone over and over ad nauseum with all of you, I'm married, I stay yeah. home, I go to dinner parties. I'm not out really doing that stuff. So I don't see this, but that there is like violence against these different racial, you know, yeah. ethnicities from other gay people out there. Have you seen anything like that? Yeah, I've seen it since I came out in the oh, 80s. Oh my God, wow. Um, and again, you know, because I, you, you have, you didn't come out early in the 80s and then you met your husband, Scott, and you guys have been in a relationship. So in some right. ways you're cloistered from the the larger community and yeah. the bar scene and all that kind of stuff, circuit parties, big social events, you know, that are geared toward more, more single or open couples and stuff like that. So it has existed for a very long time, but it's, it's sort of been my experience. Like I said, social media is, can be such a cesspool. Yeah. Um, and it really does feel like that has magnified it or made people believe that it's okay just to write something because you don't have to take personal responsibility because there's really no one there in your face to call you out on it. Right. I mean, that's a definite, but to get violent with somebody in a bar because they're a different ethnicity, I doesn't, doesn't make sense to me, you yeah. know? Um, and then like I was reading what happened in our whole United States during COVID and so many people were against Asian people because they were blaming them for COVID. Well, that's because we had a fucking moron in the White House who referred to it as the Asian f flu. So right. you know, that doesn't help. But there were also reports of within the gay community, gay, white males who were attacking gay Asian men for the same reason. I'm like, okay, I... And my money is on there were probably log cabin Republicans or some yeah. dumb, you know, dumbass, ignorant fool who doesn't get that a disease isn't tied to a particular ethnic right. group or particular sect of people. Like, you know, because in the 80s, gays, if you were gay, you had AIDS. So it's yeah. that same mentality that, you know, is just this pervasive ignorance that still it just exists so it's uh, and it, it was allowed to come out from under its rock way back in 2015 when that yeah orange boil decided to come down the escalator and i i understand well i don't understand but like the mentality of an older person maybe being locked into this racial divide thing but this is a lot of younger people that are you know having these discrimination against having discriminations against uh, ethnicities without a doubt because that person in that profile that i showed you was 30 years old unbelievable yeah. so what is something that men our age i mean as we've talked about a lot we need to be out there setting the example we need to be out there correcting some wrongs and showing you know the fight that we fought what's something that we can do to kind of curb what's happening out there so I had read something too, which was actually a shocking number for me, that 61% of people of color within the LGBT community have experienced overt racism from within the community. That's a, that's a, that's a, a mind-boggling number. Yeah, right. Um, and I think what we need to do, first of all, just personally, is acknowledge that all of us have some prejudice within ourselves and it's not a bad thing but it's something that needs to be acknowledged because until you acknowledge it it sort of sits under the surface and it's just allowed to sort of sit there you know to say oh yes i do have this misperception of a particular group of people or maybe i do think this way and i don't want to um and just to get it out you know have a conversation with somebody about it and you know, from Avenue Q, that song, Everybody's a Little Bit Racist. It's so true. We all have, because of the way our society is and always has been, there are these hierarchies within our society itself. Right. And there are certain groups that believe they're better than other groups. 
And there are microcosms of that in every single community. Well, let, let's talk about some of those things within that we're finding within our community, um, forms of prejudice. Uh, one, which you mentioned, because we feel we're better than each other, um, there's a big status uh, kind of case system, not only in our entire country and in our our society, but within our community as well. I see that a lot. We here in Palm Springs see that a lot, that there are the divides between the haves and the have-nots and the haves more than everybody else, and then the haves a little bit more than everybody. You know, there are those people, um, and I see that. Um, There are people of all different colors who are on all those different levels of snobbery or feeling better than each other. there's also within our community something that I see in our circles are um, careers. People kind of, you know, I'm a doctor, so I'm better than you, or I'm a lawyer. It's usually the lawyers are better than you, or um, you know, I, I'm a real estate agent. Yeah, but I sell million dollar homes, but I sell twelve twenty million dollar homes. So they're all putting themselves yeah. on these different levels and looking down from their little plateaus Um, yeah and it's that uh, it's that hierarchy that i think again our society has created this mentality that you have to be better than somebody else right you have to have a leg up on somebody else or you yourself don't feel complete or full and it's such a such a dangerous game to play you know, and a lot of it comes from insecurities. Why do why do people? Oh my God. You know, yeah, yeah. Why do pe- why do people put down other people? Because it's it's something within themselves that's missing. Oh, totally. It's definitely that hurt people hurt people. Yeah. You know, and the the abused becomes the abuser. Right. And to make themselves feel better, they're going to put down someone yeah. who they feel is lesser than, um, which is very sad. Uh, yeah, and it's, it really is. And even to see men our age who have had amazing careers and have built an amazing lives to also be doing that. It, you know, like, I know you see this all the time as well in restaurants, the way yeah. people treat their waiters or whatever, the bussers, the whoever, even People here, everybody has a gardener. The way people treat their gardeners, uh, it's unbelievable to me. It's like, yeah, you had better opportunities or you made better choices, whatever it is. You are not a better person. It was just. Or you were born on third base and are trying to convince the world that you hit a triple and you didn't. (laughs) You were born there. You didn't do anything to get to that status or to that place in life or to that bank account. Yeah. You know? yeah, because it's not like back in the old days where there were self-made millionaires or self-made businessmen. Nowadays, the structure of our society is built that that glass ceiling cannot really be broken through very easily. So, um, yeah, okay. there's that. <laughs> All right. Well, another uh, thing that I, I witnessed through you, through the apps, and believe me, I am taking back the woof and the the little paw print. These are... Fabulous things I'm learning. Um, but that people are saying no femmes, no masculine. Like that, again, I, I don't know how to. And I, I hate to pop people's bubble, but because um, again, there's a lot of people who write mask for mask, um, which masculine for masculine, M A S C, uh-huh. right? Um, and it's an interesting thing that I've experienced, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the show before, that I managed a gay bar in West Hollywood for a very long time. So I had uh, more exposure than I would have liked to the underbelly of the gay community. (laughs) Um, Because you see people at their absolute worst, right? Um, But a lot of times that person who has created that image of themselves in their head that they're very masculine um, tends not to be the case. Or, you know, they're, they're that person who says, well, my family doesn't know I'm gay. 
And my response after, again, you know, you work in a gay bar, you have to become, mm, you have to put up a wall and be able to respond in a heartbeat to a, a comment like that. And my comment was usually, have they met you? <laughs> because, you know. Yeah. Ah, you're, you're, yeah. Yeah, we all know. You're not Tom Selleck. You're more like Jack from Will and Grace. And um, yeah. the illusion that they create for themselves, which is, again, that hierarchy that happens. Well, don't you think that's true on all these levels of prejudice? Like, when we are watching those Trumpers at those rallies and they're talking about being the superior race and it's these like fat white people with like inbred features and no teeth and they're like we're we're the best and you're like what (laughs) I think everybody who has a prejudice is kind of building up who they actually think they are yeah there's that illusion that they are better than somebody else they because again, be. there's a void yeah. in them that they know is there. They might not acknowledge because, you know, we all, we all live in a sense of denial to some degree. And to th- convince yourself that you're better than somebody else, somehow it f- may fill you up momentarily, but that black hole is still there. And if we can all acknowledge the fact that the person who picks up your garbage is no better than the doctor who's doing surgery on you. Right. Or worse. And that doctor is no better or worse than, you know, whoever would have the, the head of the hospital. It's just, if, if we could just level the playing field and realize that we're just all people just trying to do our best. I just don't think that's really ever going to happen. Uh, I don't know how to erase and start all over, you know? Um Another form of discrimination that we're, we definitely are seeing in, within our community is ageism. I know we've talked about this. Yes. Uh, this is a really big one that hits guys our age and older. Uh, this ageism thing where we are looked down upon because the younger person feels that they're better, that they know more and know better and whatever. And just because their skin is taut they're better human beings. I, I don't get that either. Um, it's yes. A, it's, a, it's a tough pill. I'm try, I was trying to be... I saw you trying to think, which was really painful. <laughs> I wasn't painful. trying to think. I was editing. Because, <laughs> oh, okay. um, you know, there's so many things that go on in my head that I know I shouldn't say. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they pop out in ways that surprised me sometimes so i was i was trying to edit is what what you were seeing that's where the smoke was coming from yeah um yeah again it just you know you said that that to level that playing field and to realize that no one is better than the other one i don't think we need to erase i think we need to acknowledge and until we do that we can't move forward all right well then i'm going to put you on the spot here uh, acknowledge something for us that you are prejudiced about or discriminating towards? That's a perfect question. And believe me, I'm going to turn it back on you. Okay. Um, so for me, and I know this comes from me because I have shared here that from probably about second grade until my mid sophomore year in high school, I was overweight. And bullied and you know it wasn't it wasn't pretty and you know my life would be going to school coming home and eating and sitting on a couch until I went to bed that was my life for a very long time um so I tend to discriminate against people who are overweight in my head because I see myself I see that and I realize that that what I'm putting out on them is how I felt about myself when I was overweight. And sometimes I am so much more judgmental than I should be in regard to somebody who has weight challenges because I know how hard that is. Yeah. And I know that pain that you're suppressing and food is your savior. 
So I know that and I get angry at myself all the time, but I also call myself on it. Um, cause I do know that struggle. Um, so that is one for me. That's, that's a big one. Okay. And, um, how about you? What well, first, your, what would we'll, be yours? We'll come back to me, but I just want to okay. keep going on on this thing. So definitely that's something that even I see out there in our community, that kind of prejudice or discrimination about body types. You know, if somebody is overweight or doesn't, you know, I don't know, look perfect, that they are judged. Um, not so much now at our age. I see. I see that has kind of changed a bit. And I don't know, do you see that as well, that men our age now are not being that discrimin discriminatory against overweight people? Um, let's just go with what you, you said and not specifically focus on overweight. But, because, but yes, I do. I okay. still do think it exists. But there's also that other body types. Because I hear the things that people say when I'm out in the bar about somebody and their physical appearance. And it offends me deeply. Yeah. Because um, again, I, I walked in those shoes. Right. I know that pain. And it's so interesting that when I hear it from somebody else, it's one of those things that I acknowledge that that's exactly how I must sound in my head. And I do everything in my power not to live there. And I've gotten so much better at it. Um, I still acknowledge the fact that I have a way to go with it. But again, it's that acknowledging that this exists in us on some level, that is the way we move beyond it. We can't pretend that it's not there. We can't act as if, well, I'm not prejudiced. You know who, you know who scares me the most? Those people. I'm not prejudiced. I'm right. like, okay, first of all, you live in this world. You have some prejudices. They just are there. Because right. that is the way we are raised. That is the way our society is. And whether it is financial or physical or racial, something is there. Don't, I'm, do you find that? That there's always a level of something that we could improve on in regard to how we perceive other people? Oh, definitely that, yes. But I also see people, especially our age, who have put the work in and have kind of now become a better human being, you know, and Absolutely. which is awesome. I also see, back to the body types, something else that I see within our circles, because we, we are in, you know, those circles of people that are coupled and have been together for years and years, where the body isn't that important anymore. You know, like having the perfect six pack or whatever, it's just like, okay, this is who I am. I'm exercising to be healthy if I need to, you know. Uh, so I don't, I'm not out there, and I've said this to you, I could not be out there dating. <laughs> like I, it's challenging. Uh, I, would be, I would be so <laughs> self-conscious every second. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be difficult for me. But I do see people who have put the work into it. And I... I definitely have put work into it to be, to let go of some of those things. Um, the way I was raised, the, the person I was, I was incredibly judgmental. I did feel that I was one of those people who was better than everybody else. And, um, you know, I, again, it was the way I was raised and who I was and the right. life I was living. And, uh, I, I've had the most fortunate, I've been, I'm so grateful for the life that I've been given um and it has been easier than most people and but i i did this young though i realized this very very young i was still living in new york city and was like i need to get control of this um before i become those people that i don't want to be um you know who are always judging who are feeling that they're better who are always putting themselves higher and looking down on people um Again, I was having this amazing life. I, it was too much, too young, and I put the work into it. I even left New York City. I tried to become, in my head, a normal person, um, getting a job. And of course, that didn't work out because I'm just not that guy. But uh, I also did the, and I'm, I don't know if I can pronounce this, the mea culpa um, tour, 
where I went back and apologized to so many people that I felt I mistreated by feeling better than they were. Um, that's when, yeah. For anybody who's part of a program, you know that's making amends, right? It's it's that it's it is the mea culpa. Yeah. But, uh, it, it's so huge to to own that and to apologize for yeah something that you perceived was wrong. And it's interesting that sometimes you go back to the person and they're like, oh, that didn't bother me. But you know that in your head you did something that was right selling you out in some way. Yeah. Then there were those other people who were like, yeah, yeah. you were a total <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you know, what a dick you were, yeah. you know? So I, I want to I go back to you. What is yeah. your... What is your challenge still today? Well, I think it's that. It's still like, yes, I overcame that. But again, that is innately who I was right. and who I am. And so I do need to kind of fight that. And I see it most when I see somebody and I, for that quick few seconds, I think, oh, competition. They're better than I'm. I have to do something better than they. I I have a better house. I have a better car. I have a better whatever, you know, like, and then it's like, whoa, here we go. You know, I acknowledge it. And then I, you know, step off and then I go do something nice for somebody. Uh, you know, I, that's something that, again, when I was young and I, I did, did this whole like re who I am thing. That's when I started realize the importance of getting out of yourself and doing right. it for other people and, you know, really getting out there and seeing how the other people live, the people that you are judging, uh, you know, walk in their shoes. But that biggest hurdle, I think, for a lot of people is acknowledging it. Because yeah. it's, so, it's so hard for a lot of people to say, I was wrong. Right. Whether it be in the way I thought or the way I behaved. Um, that for some reason, that's the... You know, Elton John, sorry seems to be the hardest word. Right. About as true as it gets, right? But then it's also a word that people just throw around. Like, right. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Didn't really mean it. Yeah, you oh, did. Yeah. I, I, and I call people on that shit because it happens in a bar all the time. Yeah. People will say something offensive and I'm like, excuse me? And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, no, you're not. And please don't give me an insincere apology. If you mean it, then that's one thing. If you don't, don't just say it. Yeah, like when, you know, back to racism, whatever, if we're in a group of gay men and somebody like says something derogatory about a Hispanic person or, or a black person, was like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, and it's usually the response is, oh, yeah, I didn't really mean that. I yeah. just, you know, uh, uh. and I'm going to give you a lot of credit, Mr. R uh, Foley. Um, uh, on one of our last shows, you said something and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Can't really. And you were just like, oh. Yeah, sorry about that. You know, you really genuinely were like, you're right, I shouldn't say anything like that, whatever, which was brilliant and a great way to then move forward and never go back in that direction right. where these other people who are throwing around that sorry word very easily are like, oh yeah, sorry, didn't really mean that. And then two minutes later, they're like, oh my God, did you see those, you know, Asian people? Blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. Wow, okay. But for me... That's the like, yeah, no, you're not going to be in my life. Um, I'm just not, even if I like these people, no, um, I can't have them in my lives. And I really do take joy in calling people out. Mm. Like, I really do. Yeah. I like to make people squirm, <laughs> especially if it's deserved. And I've always said to people, if you throw a stone, I'm going to throw a boulder. So you better duck. Okay. Well, fantastic, I guess. Uh, just don't throw in <laughs> rocks at me. Um, just I, at least I give do, me a warning. I do know? it in a really nice way, but I, 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 I can't sure. not do it. Okay. All right. Any other uh, prejudices you see within the gay community, gay against gay, out there? Um, definitely. Again, we've discussed body type. We've discussed age, ageism. Um, I think we have to go back to the racial aspect um and you know we are white men of privilege right just because of the society we live in that we have a leg up and that is something we also should acknowledge when somebody 
of a different ethnic background has a little bit more resentment and we're like, oh, you're overreacting. It's like, no, they're not. Uh, right. They've yeah. lived a life we don't understand. We never will understand. But, and we have to have compassion for that. But how, I mean, that's something that's mind blowing about the gay community. We all understand discrimination or being treated differently because we're gay. It has we had nothing to do with it. This is the way that I was born. This is the way I came out. Right. Same with someone who is black or Hispanic or Asian or Middle Eastern. That's they had nothing to do with it, you know? Same thing with people some people who are like, oh, I'm so good looking. And uh, it's like, you had nothing to do with that yeah. either. That was your parents. Shut the fuck up. You know, um, I think we as the gay community should understand a little bit better, but we're not. I don't get that. Do you? Yeah, I do. Because I do think within minorities, not just our community, but in other minorities, there is definitely some aspects of bigotry towards your own because, again, for some reason, you think within that community you're a little bit better than somebody else within the community. Um, and that's the game I think we have to stop playing with ourselves and get off that treadmill. And again, just if just even for a minute a day, you just take a look out at the whole world and go, we are the same. Take away the job, take away the money, take away the house, take away, it's, we are all exactly the same, regardless of, you know, if you put like 12 babies in a room of all different colors and races and sizes and shapes, there, there isn't a single one of those babies that wouldn't play with any of the other babies. Right. You know, it's, that's, that's who we are. And all that other shit is stuff that society and our families have put on us. And until we acknowledge it, we can't take that old suit off and put on a new one and move forward. So I'm gonna go back to the acknowledgement aspect of owning our own bigotries and prejudices. Okay, so again, for those of us gay men over 50 who've been through a lot, we have fought the fought, we've gotten to where we are, we have fought our own bigotry and discriminations and prejudices. What is something that we can do to help heal our gay community? Acknowledgement is one. Got that. Calling out? Or is that a dangerous thing? I, there are ways to call out things in a way that's not in itself being judgmental. Um, where you don't say to somebody, you're an asshole for saying that, right? It's first, it, you, why would you say something like that? Ask that question. What, what, where did that come from? Right. Um, and not doing it in a confrontational way, but doing it in a, in a way that, where the person acknowledges that, oh, I may not have even been aware that I did that. I think we all do that too sometimes we do because it's just part of our personality or whatever it is we do, we we do something or react to something in a way that might be off-putting to somebody and we don't see it but until somebody points it out you can't i don't want to say fix it but you can't if you're not acknowledging it you can't move forward that's Again, my okay. point in this whole thing is that, yeah, calling it out, I don't think is dangerous if you do it in the right way. And then back to the apps, which, you know, is already a shorthand, you know, introduction <laughs> or whatever. Um, I guess I understand them saying like, no, I, these are the people I'm not interested in, or this is what I'm not interested in, but. I don't know. Can, do you see that 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 can be taken away? Those prejudices, those like no fats, no femmes, no blacks. Yeah, I do. No, that can be taken away. Absolutely, take it out of your profile. And if somebody contacts you that you're not interested in, be upfront and say, you know what, we're not a match. Thank you for the interest and good luck. It's exactly what I have done. So even way back in the chat room days, um, I would do that. 
Because if someone goes out of their way and puts themselves out to, you know, just acknowledge me, yeah. I'm not going to be a fucking douche about it. Regardless of, it's, it's just, you know, and that's my codependent caretaker nature. But I've learned to make that a good thing where I'm not going to hurt somebody else's feelings. And believe it or not, when you put something like that in your profile, it does hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah, I would imagine, yeah. you know. And it may not be your intent, but that's what it does. Right. Okay, so let's do some more good. And let's talk about our happy gay moment of the week. I'm going to throw this to you, Michael. You get okay. to, to bring some happiness into this conversation. I kind of love this one because the state of California officially designated its very first LGBTQ landmark. And that was the Black Cat Bar in Silver Lake in Los Angeles, um, which was the site of the first gay protest in Los Angeles. Back in 1967, pre-Stonewall. Wow. Because on New Year's Eve in 1967, not New Year's Eve, it was actually New Year's Day because it was after midnight. In 1967, cops raided the bar, beat mm -hmm. the shit out of people, arrested them for lewd conduct. Because again, we talked about this in a previous show, that just kissing somebody or holding someone's hand right. in public used to be against the law. It was a felony. And... The next day, the community organized, and hundreds of people showed up to protest outside the bar. And awesome. that was the beginning of the gay rights movement in Southern California. That's awesome. Very yeah. cool. Um, all right. So big shout out to the Black Cat, what is it, cafe? Black, uh, cat, Black cat Bar. Bar. Uh -huh. bar in Silver Lake. Yeah. Uh, I used to live in Silver Lake. Love that area. Yeah. Um, so we, we now have our first state designated lgbtq historical landmark is there not one in san francisco no no this was the very first state recognized wow their city recognized okay this is the very first state recognized historical landmark in the state of california wow that's really cool yeah awesome um and appropriate for what we're talking about because that was about discrimination yeah um yeah. And people of all stations in life showed up at yeah. that protest the next day. Didn't yeah. matter your color, didn't matter your shape, didn't matter your size, didn't matter what you did or what you liked or who you wanted to. It just people showed up because there was a wrong perpetuated on our society, which is I a really cool thing. And can't we just do that now? Can't yeah. we just do that within our own community, no matter what your size, shape, ethnicity, color, status in life, whatever it is, can't we just all support one another and kind of move towards more positive yeah. and less of this negative crap? I mean, it's not going to happen unless we do it. So, yeah, And I know, I'm sure there's folks out there who are going to go, oh, this is a Pollyannish kind of mentality. And it's <laughs> sort of, you're living in a dream world. It's like, no, you're not. We're not, you know, again, go back to the baby analogy. And they're not going to, you know, put a bunch of one-year-olds in, in, in an arena and they're, it's, you know, they don't care. That's who we are. Right. All right. Well, then I guess that's what we have to do. Everyone get naked, put on a diaper and let's all just get along. Well, I'm going <laughs> to pass on the diaper. <laughs> But tidy whities work. Oh, honey, you are on your way to wearing a diaper. We are all on our way to being diaper oh, again. That's never going to happen. Yeah. I, I've told my husband the moment that yep. he needs a diaper, he's out of here. He's I'm well, I've him also, in the home. I, I've told friends, put a pillow over my face. Right. Or shove a bottle of pills down my throat. Because if you don't, when I oh, do eventually pass, I'm going to haunt you for the rest of your life. No, yeah, I just that's just you know. Okay, well, let's leave it back on happiness. Um, so, congrats to the Black Cat Bar, and please, everybody who's out there, uh, join us to kind of bring our community back together. And yeah, we understand 
you might have some prejudices or don't like certain things, acknowledge it, but don't vocalize it. Don't hurt people's feelings, um, especially in your apps when you're woofing. I'm so hip now knowing all this stuff about Next the time apps. we're going to go over what happens on Grindr. Stay tuned. I don't know if I'm up for that, but okay. And then I'll tell you all about what's happening on HGTV, because that's my world. Um, baby, all right. baby, baby steps, baby steps. Cool. All right. So all of you out there, please, uh, we love, love, love hearing from you. We have the best listeners out there, the best watchers who are watching us on YouTube. Um, so let us know, what are your prejudices? What are things that you've overcome, like Michael and I have? What are things that you're acknowledging? Or how are you helping our community get along? Um, or anything you want to tell us, please reach out to us. And how can they do that, Michael? You could hit us up at uh, no two gays about it, and that's the number two, no two gays about it at Gmail. We are also on Facebook with the same moniker. We're also on Threads with the same moniker, and TikTok, and don't forget YouTube. And if you do go to YouTube, please like and subscribe because it definitely helps us out. And if you want to be part of our family in a different way, pop on over to Patreon and um, join us there and help support the show. It would be greatly appreciated. And uh, again, it's no, the number two gaze about it. And that's across the board. So thank awesome. you guys. Thank you. And don't forget, send us a woof, a little paw. I <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> no, not me, Michael. Everyone wolf at Michael. You can get um, a paw. It's okay. I don't know. My husband wouldn't like that. Um, all right. This has been awesome. Thank you, for Michael, for helping me kind of work our way through this weird part of our community. Um, but it's good. It's good that we're acknowledging Absolutely. it and talking about it. Um, so thank you. And until next time, Michael. Until next time. And thank you, Tom. And thank you, everybody out there for listening. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. See ya.